Hi, I'm Thee, Thee Smith, here at the Cathedral of St. Philip on Wednesday, January 20th in the year 2021. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us for this midday meditation. An auspicious day, inauguration day. It's the King holiday weekend or week. And, um, and there's so much going on in our nation and also in our church. It's the season of Epiphany. And so I, jo- I share with you uh, as we begin the opening prayer for the second Sunday of Epiphany just past, governing this entire week of uh, the Epiphany season of light. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, in addition to our Epiphany season, today is the observance of uh, commemoration of Fabian, uh, Fabian, who was an early bishop and martyr in the Christian tradition in the year 250, a martyred in the city of Rome. Uh, so an early bishop who, uh, who professed Christ during that period of the first 300 years of the church during the persecution of the church, where it was still dangerous to be a Christian and emperors had organized various persecutions. There were kind of waves of persecutions depending on which emperor was in charge. And Fabian is said to be one of the first uh, martyrs, one of the martyrs during the first uh, persecution that was empire-wide, that, that uh, operated throughout the empire. Uh, but he became a bishop in a, in a way that's interestingly converging, convergent with our second Sunday of Epiphany scriptures from last Sunday, which were focused on the call, the call of disciples. In the Old Testament lesson, it was the call of the boy Samuel uh, to, be a, to become a prophet as he was serving, in the, uh, serving under the, the priest uh, Eli. And then in our gospel story, it was the call of the disciples, uh, Nathaniel and the others responding to our Lord's call to them to be disciples. And so it's always a, a great occasion to reflect on our own call story, as I will do briefly with you uh, in a few minutes. But first, let's hear about Fabian. Uh, Fabian, in the year 236, um, was part of a crowd that was assembling in Rome, uh, this is the the story, to elect a pope as successor to the preceding pope. Uh, And uh, uh, he was just a lay person who showed up in the crowd. But as the story goes, told by uh, the historian Eusebius, a dove flew over the crowd and lighted on his head and in spite of the fact that he was a total stranger, not even a candidate for election, uh, the people unanimously chose him uh, to be Pope, shouting, he is worthy, he is worthy. And he was ordained uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the episcopate as a bishop uh, without opposition, becoming the Bishop of Rome. Uh, and uh, so that's an interesting kind of call story, uh, called uh, whether you ask for it or not, and, uh, and uh, called to see if you will agree or not. Now, of course, uh, agreeing to your call story is part of our tradition, famously uh, as in the Magnificat when the Blessed Virgin Mary responds to the call of the angel to be the Christ bearer, uh, the, the Theotokos, the divine God bearer. Um, and uh, Fabian is celebrated for having been a remarkably effective bishop of Rome, dividing the the uh, the, empire, the the city and the region into various dioceses, uh, the first kind of establishment of church government in that regard, um, and uh, various other in- innovations. Um, eventually martyred, as I said, during during the uh, during the persecution under under uh, the emperor Decius, um, and so um, and so we have also a question about our own call stories. I was particularly struck in the Old Testament lesson from 1 Samuel chapter 3 for last Sunday about the way the the reading begins. Uh, It says that uh, 
the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. And that's why, as the story goes, Samuel is called several times as he, during the night. Uh, he's awakened during the night by hearing a, his name called. And he goes to the old, the old priest, uh, Eli, and says, here I am. And Eli keeps telling him to go back to bed. Uh, he didn't call, I didn't call you. But finally, uh, Eli realizes that, oh, this must be the Lord calling the boy and says to Samuel, next time you hear your name called, uh, wake up and, and answer, uh, here, here am I, uh, here am I, your Samuel, speak, uh, your, your, your servant Samuel, speak, uh, say, say the word you would have for me. The right answer. What has been our answer? Well, when I, when, if you were to ask me, when did I feel that I was called to be a particular kind of disciple uh, and even uh, uh, a, a devoted, devout, devoted follower of our Lord? Uh, one of the occasions that stands out for me is witnessing um, an encounter between uh, my, my first wife uh, when I was uh, married right out of college and the woman that we called our mother in the Lord, our spiritual mentor. And um, there was this remarkable moment uh, in our kitchen, I will never forget it, when um, my wife was, uh, was weeping and over, over various experiences in her, in her life, her, her spiritual journey uh, from, from childhood into young adulthood, uh, still as we were still just emerging from, uh, as college students into our maturity. And um, she was being ministered to and comforted by our spiritual mother. And, um, uh, and I remember the two of them embracing and with uh, my wife's back to me and my mother's face, our spiritual mother's face toward me. And as she was embracing my wife, I remember her looking up at me directly into my face. And I tell you, I can still remember to this day with a kind of haunting uh, power um, the expression of pure love, of unconditional commitment and love and care for my wife that I saw gleaming through her eyes. And it was as if um, veils had lifted and I saw a kind of a piercing light, a kind of luminous intelligence and care and, and, and uh, um, um, affirmation just kind of gleaming out of her eyes. And I remember from that moment on thinking, that's what I want. I want a world in which that kind of care, compassion, intelligent, um, aware compassion, aware care is, is standard, is, uh, is the standard, is abundant, abundantly available uh, for me, for anyone. Um, the love of what I experienced in that moment and still call the love of Christ um, for the world, for all of us. Um, I became converted to that kind of love, reconverted, however one can say uh, those, those words, and have committed myself to be in service to that kind of love ever since, finding some way or another, no matter how challenging things are, in whatever context, to be a herald and a devotee of that kind of love. What's your call story? Where are you called to be that kind, to be a kind of disciple, the kind of disciple that matters to you? Uh, as our Lord called those first disciples, as we hear in our gospel, um, where it reads that uh, this was John chapter one, beginning at verse 43, where, um, uh, you know, where, where Philip goes to Nathaniel and says, we have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, um, Jesus of Nazareth, and uh, and uh, and and Jesus says to him, uh, "Do you believe? Because you because I saw you uh, miraculously under the fig tree and told you about it. You will see greater things than these, and uh, it's those greater things that I'm holding out for. Thanks be to God, holding out for it." on this inauguration day, on these future days and months and weeks ahead for our nation and for all of us as followers of Christ. And now our prayers of the people as we intercede on behalf of the world uh, in the spirit of our Lord for the sake of beloved community and, and, uh, and the reign of Christ. 
the prayers are form three found in our prayer book on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, including our Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin, our presiding bishop, Michael, our bishop, Rob, and the Holy Father in Rome, Francis, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Pray for our president-elect being inaugurated this very day, Joe, for all who call themselves, who, who respond to the call to public service and who have responded to it, that call, including our former president, Donald, for our, for our governor, Brian, and our mayor, Keisha, and for the Congress and the courts, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially those whom we remember now. Their names call silently in our heart or spoken aloud. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy, especially Fabian. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. And now let us pray for our own needs and those of others, remembering especially those on our cathedral prayer lists and on your private prayer lists, both persons and circumstances and situations for which you choose to intercede. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now, receive this benediction. As we conclude our time together, I invite you to join me in blessing the Lord. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the divine presence with rejoicing. To the most wise God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be blessing Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.